good? Amen. Come on. Before we get our hallelujah, I just need to release a prayer. I just feel an anointing on me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you right now for this precious time that you've set aside. I pray for everyone that is watching, listening, those that are here live with us right now. Bless them. I'm asking, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you release an increase of your anointing. I pray, Father, that you release an increase of your love. I pray for revelation that brings a revolution. Let it transform lives. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that we're operating under divine orders. In the name of Jesus, I thank you that no weapon that is formed against you. God says some weapons may be formed against you, but they shall not. Come on, somebody. They shall not prosper. God says there is not a weapon that has ever been made that can take you out. I decree and declare right now, thus saith the Lord, the day of victory has come upon you. Come on. The day of the day of victory. See, some of y'all have had some weeping through the night. But God said that weeping may endure for a night. But God says it's morning time. See, the night is far spent. So God says your time of weeping and travail is over. Your time to step into sunshine. Your time to step into victory. Your time to step into good news is now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, I feel, I'm operating under the, the, the anointing of God. And I'm speaking this prophetically to somebody. Somebody better receive this. Revelation 3, 8, he says, I know thy works. God says, I've seen you. See, I'm, you know what? A lot of times we spend our time pointing out the wrongs. I'm not here to point out the wrongs. I'm here to let you know God has seen the rights. God has seen the right heart. Come on, somebody. God has seen the right intention. God has seen the right motivation. He says, I know your works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. God says, you know what? Them doors that you thought were shut, I have opened them doors. You don't have to push them doors down. God says, I've opened them. I have opened doors. Why? Because I've seen your works. Come on. I've seen your faithfulness. Come on. I've seen you stay with me when everybody else gave up on me. I've seen you keep a positive mindset when everybody was trying to make you go negative. And God says, I've seen that. I, come on. I've seen that. And he says here, I have set before thee an open door. Look at your name and say, the door is open now. Okay. And no man, come on church. Boy, we about to kick into some victory, man, that is going to get the attention of others. I'm talking about we about to kick into a, a victory gear. I mean, that's, that's why God's had me getting you ready come on getting you ready and getting you able to release this radical praise because we're about to shift this thing we're about to step from trial to triumph oh yeah come on we're about to step from trial to triumph amen come on come on boy god is doing this right now and god says you know what I know, I know you. I know what your heart is about. God said, I know your heart more than you know your heart. And he says, I have set before thee an open door and no man will shut it. Then he says, for thou has had a little strength. Come on, man. I mean, let, just, on a Wednesday night. I mean, if you ever been like, if you've gone through a weary period in your life, I just need you to stretch your hands to heaven because I believe this is for you. 
I mean, maybe you're in here or you're at home, but you've gone through a weary period. I mean, you felt like, oh man, you just almost ran out of all of your strength. I thank you, Lord. And God says, for you, you had a little strength. Yeah. Come on. Some of y'all felt like giving up. Come on. The devil tried to wear you out. He tried to cause you to just give up hope and just quit on the whole thing. But then God says, I've seen you. So you had a little strength. But he said, see, ah, oh, what'd you do with the strength you had? The little bit of strength you had, what'd you do? You kept his word. Come on, somebody. It might have been one scripture. Come on. It might have been two scriptures. Come on, somebody. It might have been a gospel song. It was something that you was hanging on to and you refused to let that thing go. God says it right here. He says, you had a little strength and has kept my word and has not. Huh? Look at your name and say, I never turned on Jesus. Come on, tell somebody, say, I never quit believing in him. Look at him and say, you know, times got hard for me, but I never quit on Jesus. Hey, and you know what God says? I saw that. And that's why he is preparing you for this season of success. Come on, he's preparing you for this season of great testimony. He's preparing you for this season of chain breaking anointing. God is releasing it and we are the people to receive it. We have kept his word and we have not denied his name. And I just came here to let you know that God has seen you. He's still watching you. But God is well pleased. And God says, I'm not a man that I would lie. I'm going to bless you. I have to. Because the very life you've been living is demanding it. See, God is filling a pool on heaven. He's filling a pool on heaven right now. And I'm going to tell you, just stay excited, church. I had to obey God and release that word that was released from the altars of heaven. I want you to cleave to it. Don't let it go. And expect to see new opportunities coming into your life. I'm going to tell you right now. Expect favor that nobody else gets. Come on. Expect stuff to start working out for you that don't even make sense. Expect to start dominating in areas of life that you know nothing about. God is raising up giants in the earth. But he's the one that's doing it. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap for that word. Woo! Yeah. There it is. Thus saith the Lord. Y'all be seated. Amen. Y'all be seated. Yeah. I had to be obedient and release that word. Amen. Now, come on. You ought to be really excited to shout hallelujah now. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's get this going. Give me a hallelujah, man. And we're going to continue with the word, but I had to be obedient and release that word of prophecy. Y'all ready? Make it global. One, two, three. Hallelujah! I already knew that was coming. Amen. I already knew that was coming. Uh, and let's just do this one. Do, a, do the next one because you already know you're getting your stuff. But now you're excited about everybody else getting their stuff. All right? So let's shout this. One, two, three. Hallelujah! Praise God. Let's, let's all be seated. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Thank you for being here with us tonight for releasing your truth. We receive that prophecy that went forth tonight. We receive it. That doors are open that no man can shut. I thank you for opportunities, Lord. I thank you for status changes. Lord, I thank you that you're taking us from the bottom to the top and you're doing it through your power. We receive it. And 
Lord, as we're here just obeying you, here to gain nourishment for our spirit, I pray, Father, that you pour into us and cause your word to come alive. We bind Satan and every one of his plots and schemes, and we render him powerless now that this word will go forth and accomplish that which you sent it. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Clap for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm telling you. Yeah, just be sensitive to the spirit. Amen. Just be sensitive to the spirit. God is moving in a mighty way. And I'm excited about it. Amen. You know, we can only be excited like this because we are in relationship with God. Amen. We are in relationship. You know what I mean? We, this is what we're doing. This is what we're about. This is the life that we have chosen to live. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I have chosen to live in relationship with Jesus. Hey, can't nobody make you do that. Can't nobody make you do it. But it's a choice that God will bless you and empower you to make. We're going to preach relationship part 10. And I have spent a couple of services in there talking about our relationship with each other and how important we are to each other. Amen. Because we do appreciate and love each other. Amen. Come on, we all, you know, you got to love all people. Yeah. They, you know, they don't have to do anything to earn your love. Y'all with me? Yeah. You're just supposed to love them anyway. Yeah. And God is blessing us, and we understand that, you know, we're not in this alone. We're not in this by ourselves. We have God, but we have each other. And we put an emphasis on the fact that we come from the original church in the book of Acts. Amen? Acts chapter 2. And we spent a lot of time on that and, and uh, spent time focusing on the fact that the early church, they stayed committed to the apostles' doctrine, amen, amen. and the fellowship. Y'all with me? Yeah. They stayed committed to the apostles' doctrine, so that means what they're teaching. And so what you're doing is you're staying committed to the teaching, amen? And so you're following what God is releasing in this house. And then also we, we learn that you are to stay, they stay committed and dedicated to what else? Who was, who was listening? We had doctrine and what else did we have? Fellowship. See? Fellowship. So that means we're going to get the teaching, but also the fellowship. Amen? The fellowship, we're going to fellowship with each other. And that was, that was out of Acts chapter 2. And um, let me just give you that exact scripture and then we'll move forward tonight. But just put an emphasis on this. Let this be kind of a, just a way of life for you, that you want to stay committed to the things of God. God's got you a part of something that's much bigger than you, and we can accomplish wonderful things when we do it together. And uh, we saw what happened when they were unified in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, right? The day of Pentecost, the spirit flow, just that's what we want. We want God to flood this place, but it's going to take unity, no division. But uh, I want you to put a mark on Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And so steadfast continuance. They had made a commitment in their lives that they're going to stay with this. Amen? And so that's what we have done. We've decided to follow Jesus, and there's no turning back. Now, today I want to put an emphasis on, because um, we're... Probably going to conclude this series maybe next week because we have Mother's Day coming up on Sunday and you guys know how I like to start a new series. I'll start a new one on Sunday then there'll be a new one to follow it on Wednesday. And so we're preaching relationship part 10 tonight, but I'm going to put an emphasis on relationship versus religion. Amen. Amen. Relationship versus religion. Now, religion would not have allowed what happened at the beginning of this uh, message. Are y'all with me? Religion would not have allowed God to freely speak like he did. Religion would not have allowed God to interrupt the service. It would have been service as usual. Amen? But God moved because we're open and we are a people that are in this for a relationship. Amen? We're in this for relationship. Now, the church was never intended to be a place 
filled with religious practices. Okay? I have to emphasize this because you'd be surprised at how much of this stuff still goes on. There are a lot of religious practices in place, and people are well, well aware of how to practice those religious practices. But they are people that are undelivered, not all of them, but a lot of them, because they're bound up in ways to get to God instead of receiving the way. Y'all with me? They're bound up in, see, religion is man attempting to get to God. Relationship is God reaching down to man. Y'all with me? Amen. So it's not about how I can climb up to get to God. It's about me receiving the way he has already made in that he came down to me. Amen? He met me right there where I was. And he brought transformation into my life. Now, religion will teach me some things. Some of the things that I can learn in religion are good. But relationship will deliver me. Amen. Amen. Amen? Relationship will deliver me and put me in that free place. That free place to where I'll never be bound again. And so the church, once again, was, not, was never intended to be a place filled with religious practices. The church is supposed to be a place where the captives go free. Do you know that? Did you know that that's what the church is supposed to be? I'm talking about it's supposed to be a place where you come in here with all kind of bondage. It's supposed to be a place where you come in here with bondage on the left, bondage on the right, bondage on your mind, bondage everywhere. It's supposed to be a place where you come in with that, but then what happens? You meet Jesus. Come on. Because if you don't meet Jesus, if you don't meet Jesus, then what will happen is you will learn how to disguise your bondage. Come on. I'm just, just telling the truth. You'll learn how to cover up your bondage. But God never wanted that for you. God never wanted you to come to a church and enter into a a, a situation where you're, you're doing something, you're committed to it, but then not have the power of his son evident in your life. Amen. But see, religion does not give you the power of the son. Amen? Amen? It gives you the knowledge of man. It gives you the know-how of man. It encourages you to follow a set of rules and regulations. Right. Now, I'm not telling you, and you guys already know me, I'm not giving anybody a license to sin. We have to obey God. Amen. But what I am saying is, you obeying God is going to be a result yes. of him coming alive in you. Yes. Your obedience is not going to be because you have finally figured out how to check all the boxes on the sheet. It's going to be because Jesus is alive in me. Yes. And that can only happen through relationship. Amen? That can only happen through relationship. And so let's go to John. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Praise the Lord. You guys hear something? Sound normal? Everything? We good? Sound good? Okay. Good. Huh? Can you, can you find Brother Sean? Where's, I hear that too. You hear that? Is that on your computer? That's... Maybe to, um, anyway, John chapter 8. Now, once again, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing with you the importance, the power of relationship versus religion. I know we preach about it and we say we want people to get saved, but what does that mean? They come into a relationship. Now, it, there it is, thank you. Um, what it is, is they come into a place where they believe, right? Now, your relationship starts because you believe in Jesus. If I come to you and try to talk to you about Jesus and you don't believe in him, you can't enter into relationship, right? I can argue, debate. I can prove you wrong. That doesn't mean anything because you won't enter in because you don't believe. Okay, so Jesus, in chapter, John chapter 8, there's some powerful things. He brought deliverance to a lady who was called 
in the act of adultery, and, and that's a whole nother sermon, but that's very powerful because it was somebody that would be considered a throwaway. But, you know, that's what religion does. Come on, man. Come on. See, religion throws people away and stones them. But relationship takes the least of these. Can I get an amen right there? Relationship takes the least of these. Come on. The relationship digs way down in the gutter and pulls people up. And so she was caught in the act of adultery. And, and I don't have time to get into great detail on that uh, story, but I want you to be able to, you know, we may cover it a little more later. But the religious were looking to stone this lady because she had been caught in the act of adultery. I, I have to share a little bit of this. just too powerful for me to skip it. And so verse, let's look at verse 9. John chapter 8, verse 9. Okay, let me see. Let me just actually, I wasn't planning on sharing this now, but I'm going to just be obedient. Let's go to verse 3. John 8, 3. Remember, religion condemns, casts down, relationship lifts up. And it does not matter where you came from. Okay, John chapter 8, verse 3. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now, what do they do? Go right into religion. Amen? So how are we going to deal with this? Now, look at this. This is so powerful. I just love the anointing. They start to figure out how to condemn this person based on the religion that they've been practicing. They did not think about how they can help this person. See, we ought not be walking through life looking at how we can judge and condemn. We ought to be looking at how God can say, wow, I know that that person is strung out on drugs right now, but Lord, is that a glimmer of something I see in them? Lord, are you showing me something? Are you showing me some potential in this person? Because right now, I see that they're doing wrong, but what is that glimmer? See, that's what God sees. See, he sees the diamond where everybody else only sees the dirt. Y'all with me? And so they said, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? Now, He's about to introduce them to relationship. He's about to let them know the power of it and demonstrate it to them and show it to them firsthand. This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Now he's on assignment from heaven. But think about this. Is he doing this for, you know, uh, a saint type of person? Is he doing this for a just, noble person? I mean, taken in the very act is pretty descriptive, amen? Come on, we don't have to, you know, that's you, how, uh, you can't get any worse than that. I mean, we caught you doing this. But now, he is immediately... Come on, he'll be a defense for those who can't defend themselves. Come on. He'll be a shield for the otherwise unprotected. Can I get amen up in here? Come on. He is not looking for those that can figure it out themselves. And he's not looking for those who are looking for other people. Come on, I mean, all these religious people were not about to help this lady. So they couldn't even school her and train her up. They were just, you're wrong. It's time to throw you away. But God said, I'm going to defend this person. So Jesus steps in and starts writing on the ground. And he is defending this lady. And then he says here, so they continued asking him. He lifted him up himself and said unto them, 
He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Amen? He'll be a defense for those who are otherwise defenseless. Amen? And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one. See? All we need, Jesus will shut down some religion. Amen. I mean, he'll shut you down. Amen. Because if you're trying to do something and you're not in relationship, all we need is Jesus to show up on you. Come on. You want to take care of hypocrisy? Just pray for Jesus to show up. Because those that are pointing the finger, glory to God, if Jesus shows up, he'll, real, he'll give them revelation of the other three fingers that are pointing right at them. And he'll tell them, you know what, you're pointing out their stuff, but what about yours? And so what these guys said, Jesus just gave them a challenge. He that is without sin cast the first stone. You know sin is sin. You guys know that? We got to learn that in the church. Some people think that their sin is a little better than somebody else's sin. Well, you know, at least I'm not, you know, uh, well, I ain't perfect, but I ain't doing what you're doing. Sin is sin. So what I'm saying is that don't really matter. Amen? Amen. That don't, that don't. And so for Jesus, her adultery was no different, come on somebody, than their gossip. Y'all with me? It was no different than their religious practices and their denying God and all that. And so let's continue. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest. <laughs> he probably, the eldest went first because he was probably like, man, I got way more, <laughs> Woo! I got a long list of sin. I'm up out of here, man. You know, sometimes it's, them, <laughs> your biggest sinners are the ones that have been in church the longest because they didn't learn enough religious stuff to cover it up. Amen? And so they went out. And even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither what? See, what he is doing is he is now introducing her to relationship. He's introducing her to deliverance. You know, we don't get people delivered by condemning them. Amen. Amen? That's not our job. Our job, come on somebody, is to introduce them to the, deliver, the deliverer. And so what did he say? He says, all of the accusers, I took care of them. There is no man to con condemn you. But then he says, neither do I condemn thee. Now, just so you know that this is not a hyper grace message. He didn't tell her, I gave you a pass. Now, go back out there to adultery, and you know what, I'll come save you again. He didn't, he didn't say that in the script. He didn't say, go back out there to live in a, a sinful life, and I'm going to save you again. Is that what he said, church? No, he said, I don't condemn you, but let me give you some instructions. So what is he going to do? He loved on her first, and then he told her, I didn't clean you up. Don't go get back in the mud. Amen? And so he said, go and sin no more. Then he says, then spake Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. You don't walk in darkness and follow Jesus at the same time. See, we got to get the proper understanding of the word. I, be, I believe there's another side that's a little bit too rigid, and that's religion. And religion is, you know, just making everything so difficult for people to follow. But then there's the other side where there's no standards. Just live any kind of way you want. No, God doesn't care. Well, you got to find the truth, which is right there in the center of all of that. Jesus comes to bring transformation 
and now I am converted, and now I'm following Jesus. You know why you can't follow Jesus and follow darkness or walk in darkness? Because they're two different directions. Amen? You cannot go this way and that way at the same exact time. You're going to have to pick which one you're going, which way, you, who you're following. Amen? And so this is what he let them know. If, if they follow me, they shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So you saw religion ready to do what? Condemn. Throw away. I mean, this, this is Mary Magdalene. She went on to do some powerful stuff. But the religious folks would have, oh, man, what if God would have thrown you away? Think about that. If God would have thrown me away, I'm up in here, man, filled with so, so much excitement. I'm talking about I got a global anointing on me, and I'm, I'm releasing the word in, to millions. But God, you know, if, if he would have listened to some religious folks, they would have said, oh, no, not him. <laughs> we got to throw him out. Why? Based on what I had done. Amen? Y'all with me? I mean, I, I didn't grow up with this kind of training. Amen? I didn't have a dad teaching me anything. I didn't have all of this stuff. It was like, just, this is the way the world works, so just roll with it. Do what they do and, and make it happen. But now I'm entrusted, y'all with me, with preaching the gospel. I'm entrusted with releasing words of prophecy. I'm entrusted with praying over families. God is using me in a mighty way, but if it had been Religion, I would have been stoned. Amen? And the reason relationship is so powerful is relationship with God is he will pull you into where he is. See? It's not about us trying to pull him down into some box. Can I get amen right there? It's not about us trying to put him into a statue. It's about him pulling us into his presence. And guess what happens when I step into his presence like that? I get what he has. Amen. Come on, somebody. I get what he has. And so freedom is there, and so I get it. It becomes part of me. What did I do to earn it? So as you're walking through your life, and you're just thinking about the power of relationship, what if God started opening your eyes? to the potential of others. What if you start scouting people out? How many of you, would you look for the straight and narrow? Or would some of y'all look for, come on, somebody, the heathen? Come on. You know, God was looking for the heathen because he couldn't do nothing with the religious. Think about it. Think about his disciples. He didn't go pick all these perfect people. He couldn't do nothing with them. The religious people had it all figured out. He started looking for knuckleheads. Amen? Think about it. Why would he choose Paul? You think he converted Paul just so he would stop Paul from persecuting the church? No. He wanted a radical. God is looking for radicals. Amen? God is looking for radicals that cannot do anything right on their own. And that way they won't take credit for it. He says, if I get a hold of them, it's going to be all me. Amen? That's why Paul wrote so much and said so many powerful things that we live by today. Because it was God's takeover. Amen? It was God's takeover that made all the difference. But it was relationship. Even with Paul, God showed up on him and met him. Come on. God, come on. God showed up on him. The road to Damascus, y'all know that. I think it's Acts chapter 9. But he just showed up on him and met him. That's what we want God to do in the lives of others. My challenge to you is don't invite people to church. I want you to bring them to church. I, I know that we want that. But what I mean is, don't just leave it at that. 
Like even, how about before you even invite them, how about you ask them, do you know Jesus? Or like, where are you at with Jesus? Don't try to trick them. Say, just go with me somewhere. Where are we going? Oh, don't worry, it's going to be fun. That's going to be great. Don't worry about it. Just, just come with me. No, ask them. See where they are with Jesus. Because what we really want, this church won't work for anyone if people don't enter into a relationship with God. That's why I've had trouble over the years. I've had different people that come from different backgrounds. And so they have different structures or different systems in place that they're used to. And when they don't see that here, they, they kind of like, okay, well, hold on. Like, how come you don't have this or how come you don't have that? And it's because we're all about relationship. Yeah. I'm not about doing it like your auntie did. Come on, somebody. I'm, I'm not about having the same type of setup that you had where you knew, you know, all the deacons and all that in the back and they had their private stuff and, and half of them wasn't saved. I wasn't trying to, I'm not trying to do that. Say it, say Amen. Because I really don't care about all of that. All I want is people to walk in relationship with God. I don't want anybody putting me on a pedestal. I don't want anybody saying, you know, pastor, just lifting me up like that. I want you to learn, recognize my anointing, but understand what it's there for. My anointing is on me to help you. Not get closer to me, but to get closer to God. Because, you know, in, in today's church, a lot of people hide behind service. They hide behind anointing. You know, you got all these people, they can play stuff and they can do all this stuff and, and their hearts are not even right with God. And they're in pain and they're, they're in their suffering and they won't tell nobody because they got to hurry up and get to their post. They got to hurry up and serve again. And so what happens is when you fall into this, now you become a robot. And you go through life with a regimen and a routine. And you know how to, da 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 oh, service is going to build right here right now? Okay, I'll take it back down. And, and you get right there in that flow. And you miss what God is doing. And then people also start to promote and elevate others. And when they do that, they fail to see the special power that God's placed in them. God says, yeah, but I want to do something with you. But I'm looking to use you. Y'all with me? So we're not going to be a religious place. Amen? We haven't been this long. I already have plenty of people try to encourage me to do that. I ain't doing it. Because I want you all. Listen, one thing that you cannot do is you cannot take me with you when you're standing before God. It's going to be you and God. You're not going to be able to take me. You're not going to be able to take no deacon board. Come on, you're not going to be able to. Leadership is great. That's, I'm not against leadership. Don't get me wrong. But I'm not about people hiding behind it. Amen. I, I'm not with that. Leaders actually do. What is that? See, I didn't know I just made a statement. Leaders do. So leadership is more about doing than title. Amen? I'm a pastor because I do. What? I preach the gospel and I shepherd the sheep. I intercede. I do what a pastor is supposed to do. So therefore, I'm in this position of leadership. Religious people want titles. I want to be called this. I want to be called that. Yeah, I know what you want to be called, but what do you want to do? I don't want to, what, huh? I, well, because, you know, I'm a tither. You're supposed to be a tither. What's that got to do with anything? Do you realize that tithing is more for you than it is for the church? Tithing is for you. Amen? So that you can get the blessing to come on your life. So you, because... I'm going to tell you one thing, and I've, I've experienced this plenty in my life. If you choose not to tithe, God will bring someone else. 
I have seen God bring money from everywhere because that's what he does. Amen? But if you engage in this covenant, then guess what? You get to benefit from it. So that's a blessing for you. So you cannot just become a leader because you are a tither and you go here. If you want to step into leadership, now why am I preaching this? Because I was planning on getting with this religion and relationship. I got, I got to bring these things to the table. Leaders do. So you got to do something. Amen? I want to be a leader. Lead what? Uh, I don't know. Got to have something to do. Y'all with me? Okay. So let me continue. Now, if my relationship with Jesus is right, then I'm going to, come on, do the right thing, be the good example, live the right way, do what I'm supposed to do, take care of my duties, my leadership responsibilities. I'm going to do all that because I'm in right standing with God. Amen? So let me continue. Verse 31, John 8, 31. He says, now, he has said a lot of things, and, you know, after he delivered the lady, called in adultery, then he began to start to, you know, teach and bring some rebuke and all this kind of stuff. Now, whenever the truth is coming forth, there are going to be a lot of people that don't want to hear it, but then there will be some that do. And so there were some that did believe what they heard. Amen? Not everybody believed, but there were some that believed. So... Verse 31, he says, Then said Jesus unto those Jews which believed on him. Hmm. You know what? Let me, I'm, and this is the way I'm going to start carrying myself. I ain't talking to you if you don't want to hear what I got to say. Click me off. I, that ain't who I'm anointed to help. Come on, somebody. If you don't want to receive what I'm saying, don't listen to me. But there are some that want to hear it. You, you see what I mean? I don't have an anointing to unplug ears. God got to do that. I got an anointing to teach those who want to be taught. And so this is what Jesus was saying. Those that believed, now he's starting to speak to them. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue, now he's getting ready to show them how to live as a disciple. Because you heard what I said and you believed it, you wanted to hear it. Now let me give you some instruction. Just like he gave the woman caught in adultery. What did he say? I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more. That was instruction. What is he starting to help her to understand? This is the way you're going to stay free. You won't have to worry about nobody stoning you as long as you stay out of that sin I delivered you from. Now he's telling these Jews that believed on him, he's saying, to those that believed on him, everybody else, go on about your way. But to those that believe and want to hear what I got to say, I'm about to give you some instruction. And here's what he says. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. Okay. If you continue in my word, then we already cover Acts chapter 2 where the first church, where they decided that they were going to make a commitment. Amen. Acts, I think it was 242. But we already covered that where they said they continued steadfast with the apostles' doctrine. And so now Jesus is telling them, if you believe, guess what? If you continue in my word, then now what? So if I don't continue in his word, then am I a disciple? Oh, but I believed. Come on, see, this is another thing in the church. You got a lot of people running around ignorant. Not you guys. You guys are well-versed. That's why I tell you, get ready, because God's going to use you to teach somebody. Uh, don't think that they got to come to church to get taught the word. You'll teach them. Come on, somebody. Uh, you can teach them right there at your job. Can I get amen right there? You can teach them on the phone. You've been learning. You've been getting deposited. You've been getting word planted in you. You don't keep this word to yourself. You got to go share it. Amen? Because you all, we all have to fulfill the Great Commission. So that's why you're learning so that now you can go share. 
And so the problem is there's a lot of people that say, I believe. They don't have no word. Come on. I, I believe. You believe in Jesus? Yeah, I believe in Jesus. Well, are you sick? Ooh, I'm sick as a dog. Ruff, ruff. My body falling apart. I'm, man, I'm old. That seemed like, man, every, every time, you know, when the winter come on, my bones start crackling. Do you believe? Yeah, I believe. Amen? But my back is killing me. Wait, what did you believe? Huh? You believe your back is killing you? Or you believe, see, what is a disciple, a follower? That's what it is. So we say we follow Jesus because we believe. Jesus does not say that's enough, right? Because he says that they that continue in my word, they are my disciples indeed. So what do I got to do? I got to believe. Then I got to start doing what the first church did, amen? Y'all see where I'm going with this? You cannot build a relationship without getting in his word. I, it ain't going to work. Some people say, I know God. God talks to me. He, okay, well, what scripture is he giving you? See, that's like me getting up here giving you a word of prophecy. Thus saith the Lord, boom, 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 you're going to get this, you're going to get that, you're going to, and I give you no scriptural reference. What do I do? Thus saith the Lord, oh, here's the word on it. Because God don't speak outside of his word. And so you got a lot of people that are moving so-called spiritually, and that's that goosebump stuff that you get from religion. But relationship is built on truth. And that's why he said, if you continue in my word, then what? You're my disciple indeed. So what does that mean? You're a follower of me. So you went from believing to becoming a disciple. Y'all with me? You went from believing. So you don't, you don't become a disciple the first day you get saved. Because you don't know anything. You just believe. You become a disciple when you go home and you say, you know what? They told me to read the book of John first. I got Jesus in my heart now. Let me, let me read. Now he starts to train you. He starts to mold you and shape you. He starts to, what? By the word. But yet, a lot of churches spend so much time on other things, and people don't know their Bible. So what happens? They have disguised bondage. Because I'm just reading this to you. He says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And then he says, and you shall know the truth. How are we going to get them off of drugs? The truth. Come on. How are you going to get them to stop cussing? See? The truth. I mean, this works for everything. It'll get people out of debt. It'll get their bodies healed. It'll do everything. But without the truth, what do we have? Sunday freedom. Wednesday freedom. We got radical praise on Sunday, hallelujah, but we got moaning and groaning and weeping on Tuesday. We got, I'm standing high on the mountaintop on Sunday, and you're underneath the house on Monday. Amen? See, that, it does me no good for us all to come in here and feel great and have a wonderful time, and have a nice atmosphere, and then we go off our separate ways, and we go back to bondage. And glory to God, I see you at the grocery store, and you didn't know I saw you, and I wonder why you frowning so much. Yeah, Pastor, but, you know, because I left my joy jacket in the car. I put that out, and I normally only wear that on, because some of y'all only wear your joy jacket on Sunday, even though you come on Wednesday. I'm just saying, you didn't even pull out that joy jacket on Wednesday. It's too late. You're tired. You're tired up in here, man. <laughs> huh? I'm just, 
So if I know the truth, now how am I going to know the truth? I got to continue. I got to stand it. I got to stand his word. Day in, day out. I got to stand his word. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, you can't know God if you don't know his word. So let me, I'm going to go ahead and give you some. Now, I'm talking like Jesus because Jesus was talking to those who believed. Once again, you watching me and you don't want to hear this. Stop watching me because I'm not really talking to you. I'm talking to those who want to hear what God is saying. Amen. So now this is why we call this a training ground. This is why we don't play patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. This is why we get into the word and then we use the word to get into your life. This is why sometimes you come to church and you get convicted and you feel like, oh, man, pastor all up in my driveway. What are you doing in my business? I don't even know your business. That's the Holy Ghost. But you're the one that said you wanted to hear this. Amen. And so now this is what Jesus was telling them. You will then see I'm telling you right now because you want to hear it. I'm giving you the way to victory. You are going to have to get in the word and stay in the word. And you're going to have to put the word as the priority in your life. You're going to have to take God's word and put it above man's word. Amen. You're going to have to stop talking about your lack and start talking. Oh, come on, somebody. Because the word says, uh, Psalm 34, 10, the young lions who lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. You're going to have to start speaking about God's prosperity over your poverty. Because that's the only way. Huh? Do you think you're going to just all of a sudden just one day just show up healed? No, you're going to have to talk symptoms away. How do I do that? I put the word on it. By his stripes I am healed. Isaiah 53, 5. In the name of Jesus, I command this ailment. Go now. Because God tells me in his word in John 8, 31, if I continue in his word, then I'm his disciple. Well, guess what his disciples are? Free people. Okay, so then I can come with the next scripture and verse 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So the Amplified, put that up in the Amplified. He says here, and you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. And so make and set or they mean different things, but they both apply. I've been made free because how many know, even though you're made free, Satan is still trying to put you in bondage. Even though you already know God's not giving you a spirit of fear, then how come fear tries to rise up on you? Yeah. So you already been made for the victory, but Satan tries to trap you. Well, even in that trap, what? God sets you free. So you go free anyway. Let me continue. Then he says, um, verse 33, they answered him. Okay, hold on one second. So now these guys are saying, I'm going to just break this down before we close. These guys are saying, Jesus is saying, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you're going to be free, right? Now let me just skip up and we'll come back. I got to break this down, but go to verse 36 in the Amplified. So what does it mean? When God makes you free. Okay. Verse 36 in the Amplified. He says, so if the son liberates you. See. God has liberated us, but it's through our relationship with him. If the son liberates you, makes you free men and women, you are really. And unquestionably. Free. Look at your name and say, I'm really free. Okay, now let's back up. Go back to verse 33. Amen? Go back up to verse 33. So I had to share that. But now what does he say in verse 33? They answered him. Now, he's telling them, if you're my disciples, you continue my word, then you'll be my disciples, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You know what's wrong with religious people? They think they're free. When they're bound. You ever met that person and you try to give them some advice, you try to help them, and they say, I know that. No, I already know. I know. And you're trying to show them something like, 
Um, this is kind of the way you should, you know, I learned it. Oh, no, I got it. I got it. I got it. You don't got it, man. Your stuff is raggedy. You putting that thing together, and I already told you you left out a screw. And you don't want to read them directions. If you're a person that don't read directions, start reading directions. That's why they put them in there, man. I got this. No, you don't. Amen. But that's the problem with religion. It causes your heart to be hardened and you become rigid and you're opposed to instruction. That's why religious people, people that got a religious spirit, boy, they clash with me. They clash with me, man. They, for some reason, they don't know why they're going home and like, oh, I just, you know, it's just something about that pastor. I mean, he just. Because they got layers of bondage and come to one. So you know what God will do for you? You come to one service and he's going to cut a layer. Yeah. 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 One service. I'm telling you, you got that callus on your heart. One service. <laughs> and you're going to be like, oh, what is that? Now, if you receive the deliverance that God has for you, he'll keep on. Slicing. And next thing you know, you'll get that deliverance that God has for you. But if not, if you listen to that religious spirit, that religious spirit will have you saying, uh-uh. No, no, see, because that pastor right there is just too arrogant. I don't know who he think he is. I'll tell you, anointed and appointed <laughs> to help you. Amen? Nobody listens to this unless they want to get helped. Nobody comes here unless they want to get helped. But God will help you. But I'm going to tell you right now that religious spirit is going to be a tough fight. And so we want to make sure that we're free. Now, this is what these guys said. They said, Jesus is telling verse 32, and you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And then they said, what did they say in verse 33? And he amplified. They answered him, we are Abraham's offspring. What are you talking about? See, that's like you bring correction in this. I grew up in the church. I mean, I was an usher at three. Okay. So then he says here, they're saying, they answered him, we are Abraham's offspring descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone or anybody. Yeah, except Satan. Amen. You know, just because your grandpappy was a pastor don't mean you free. Come on, somebody, just because your mama was the church lady don't mean nothing to you. Where are you at? Come on, how many PK kids we got out there that ain't for God. Lots of them. So that proves right there that, see, that's what I taught my kids. Yeah, I trained you up and taught you what to believe, but you're going to have to believe that on your own. You can get, the, you can get God's power working in your life. You can experience favor and good things, but you're going to have to do that and make that decision for yourself. I trained them up so that they can, me and my wife trained them up so that they could make a decision. Religious people are walking around living on lineage, inheritance. And that's what they said. We're Abraham's seed. We've never been in bondage to anyone. Amen? And what we got to understand, and we will continue on this. I'm going to close in a minute, but we'll probably finish this up next time. But there, he's making it clear. He says here, what do you mean? But they're saying, what do you mean by saying you will be set free? Jesus answered them, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, whoever commits and practices sin is a slave to sin. So what is he saying? He said, you thought you were free because you were Abraham's seed. Well, I'm telling you, you are a slave because of the sin that you got running your life. I told you. Religion disguises bondage. 
That's it. It never allows anybody to go free. But if we are those people that desire to go further in God, now he says, verse 35, now a slave does not remain in a household permanently forever. The son of the house does remain. So what he's saying is, I got power. Now you're talking about your Abraham seed, but you haven't been introduced to this power. If everything was perfect with Abraham, God wouldn't have had to send Jesus. And that's what he's telling them. Then, verse 36, we'll close on this. So then he's telling them, you're not free unless you've been made free by the Son. Come on, somebody. I'm going to tell you right now, you're not free because you grew up in the church. You're not free because everybody in your family knows how to speak in tongues. And y'all speak in tongues at family reunions. That ain't making you free. You're only free because the son has made you free. And you can only receive that freedom by entering into what? Relationship with him. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's close in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you, or tonight, we thank you for being here with us. Thank you for releasing your word. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that your word goes far beyond even this message, that it would continue to penetrate the atmosphere and bring transformation across the globe. We thank you for it. We praise you. We honor you for who you are. Now, maybe you're watching us right now. You don't know Jesus as Lord. We want you to know right now that you can receive him as your master. No matter where you are, just repeat this prayer and you will be saved. Repeat after me, church. Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day, I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap, amen. Praise God. Let's stand to our feet, amen. Stretch your hands to heaven. I'll release this blessing on you. God will prosper you. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless this, your people. Lord, I pray that as we leave, that our relationship with you gets stronger and stronger with every day that you give us. We praise you and we honor you and we ask, Lord, that you would continue to surround us with favor as with a shield. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.